Hello, and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this tech tip, I will be looking at how to use exported configuration settings from Server Manager to install roles and features onto a Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 server. Exporting configuration settings from Server Manager is a very useful tool if you have a situation where you must deploy multiple servers that require the same roles and features. I will start by briefly covering roles and features. Next, I will explain how to export the configuration settings for roles and features from Server Manager and how these may be imported into another server. Later on in the video, I will demonstrate how to perform the export on my Windows Server 2012 R2 server and how to import these settings into a different Windows Server 2012 R2 server. So let's get started. Before we look at exporting configuration settings, we first have to discuss roles and features. When you first install Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2, the operating system is very basic. That is, straight out of the box, there is not an awful lot you can do with it. You can think of a clean install of Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2 as something of a clean slate for you to customise and build entirely to suit your needs. Adding functionality to a Windows server is achieved predominantly by installing roles and features. On a Windows server, there are quite a lot of roles and features to choose from. Essentially, the roles and features you install on your server will depend entirely on what the individual needs for that server are. For instance, if you have a server that you want to host virtual machines, you would install the Hyper-V role. Alternatively, if you would like your server to host some kind of website or web-based application, then the web server IIS role will have to be installed. Furthermore, some roles come with additional subcomponents, called role services, which can be optionally installed to enhance the functionality of the role even further. A good example of this is the IIS role. When you install the web server IIS role, Server Manager will ask you to choose which components, or role services, you would like to install. On screen, you can see all of the role services for IIS alone. As you can see, there are rather a lot of components. Since IIS does not require every single one of these role services to work, you are able to pick and choose which of the role services you would like to add to your infrastructure, and which you would rather leave out. If you are installing the IIS role onto just one server, this is not a problem. You simply select the IIS role and choose the role services you want. However, Let's say that you work in a large enterprise and have been given the task of installing IIS onto 20 servers. All 20 servers require the IIS role and the same role services to be installed. Of course, you could achieve this by logging onto each server in turn, selecting to install the IIS role, and select all of the role services you require manually. Whilst there is nothing wrong with this approach, it would be rather time-consuming to do this on 20 servers. Also, due to the amount of role services available for IIS, it is a very easy role to misconfigure. With Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2, when using Server Manager to install roles and features, you are able to export these settings into what is called a configuration file. For example, I could log on to the first of the 20 servers, open Server Manager, select to install the web server IIS role, select the role services I require for IIS, say default document, directory browsing, HTTP errors, static content, HTTP logging, 
and request filtering, for example. And then export my chosen settings to a configuration file. The configuration file is essentially an XML file. The XML file itself can then be saved to a network share or even to a USB flash drive. From the remaining 19 servers, I can, using Windows PowerShell, import the XML file and install all of the roles and role services that were exported into the file. The end result is 20 servers, all with exactly the same roles and role services installed. However, it is worth noting at this point that all the XML file does is install the roles and role services. Any post-installation tasks for configuring the role will have to be performed by an administrator on each server individually. One final point I would like to raise is that, if you plan to export configuration files a lot, you would be best to create the XML file on a clean server that has no roles or features installed. Creating a configuration file on a server that already has roles and features installed could cause problems. Let me try to explain why. When you install a role onto a Windows server, depending on what that role is, it may require certain features to work. That is, in order to install the role, you are also forced to install the features it requires. For example, let's take the roles Active Directory Rights Management Services and Windows Server Update Services. Both of these roles require ASP.NET 4.5, a component of the .NET Framework 4.5 feature. With this in mind, now imagine that you have two servers, both running Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2012 R2. Let's say that the first server has the Active Directory Rights Management Services role installed. Because this role is already installed, the server also has the ASP.NET 4.5 feature installed, since this is a requirement for the role. Meanwhile, the second server is a clean install, meaning it has no roles and features installed whatsoever. Now, let's say that you want to install Windows Server Update Services onto both servers. If you were to install Windows Server Update Services onto the first server, you will not be prompted to install ASP.NET. This is because ASP.NET was already added when you installed Active Directory Rights Management Services. To make the install on the second server easier, you decide to export the Windows Server Update Services role into a configuration file. You will then use this file to install the role onto the second server. However, the problem with this approach is that when you export the settings for Windows Server Update Services to the XML file, the ASP.NET 4.5 feature will not be included in the export. When you export settings to a configuration file, only the settings you have selected at that time will be included. Consequently, this could lead to problems when installing the roles that were exported into the file on another server. As you can see, the more roles and features you have installed on a server, the harder it can be to create configuration files that have the correct settings. To demonstrate how exporting configuration settings works, I will, in my lab environment, deploy three Windows Server 2012 R2 servers named Web Server 1, Web Server 2, and File Server. All three servers are on the same subnet and have been assigned static IP addresses of 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.2, and 192.168.1.3. 
Apart from changing the host names and assigning the IP addresses, no further changes have been made to the servers. No roles and features have been installed whatsoever. On my file server server, I have also created a shared folder named Exports. This is the folder I intend to export my XML file to. On my web server 1 server, I will, using server manager, install the web server IIS role. To prove that the export really does work, I will also install every role service that comes with the IIS role, including those not offered by default. I will then export these configuration settings to an XML file named IIS.XML and will save the IIS.XML file in the exports folder on file server. Next, on my web server 2 server, I will, using PowerShell, import the IIS.XML file and install all of the roles and role services that were saved to the file. The end result is two servers, Web Server 1 and Web Server 2, both of which contain the exact same roles and features. I will now change over to my Web Server 1 server to demonstrate how to export configuration settings to an XML file from Server Manager. This is my Web Server 1 server. To prove that there are no roles installed on this server, I will open Server Manager. In the left-hand pane, you can clearly see that, apart from file and printer services which is installed by default, there are no roles installed. If there were, they would be listed here. From Server Manager, I will now install the IIS role onto this server by selecting Manage and Add Roles and Features from the drop-down list. This launches the Add Roles and Features wizard. From the wizard, I will next my way through to the Select Server Roles page. If I scroll down through the roles, notice that we have the role Web Server IIS. To install the role, I will tick the tick box and will add the necessary features that are required to install the role. With the role selected for install, I will next my way through to the Select Role Services page. As you can see, there are a lot of role services that can be either installed or left out. Remember, Role services are optional subcomponents that extend the functionality of the role. As such, not all role services are required to get the role to work. Just to prove a point, I will scroll through the list of role services and will tick all of the tick boxes, one at a time, so that every role service is installed along with IIS. When I export the configuration settings to the XML file, I will expect every one of these role services to be included in the configuration file. Once all of the role services are selected, I will click Next to open the Confirm Installation Selections page. I am now ready to install IIS and its role services. However, before I do, Notice at the bottom we have a link, Export Configuration Settings. If I click on this link, I will be asked to choose a location to save my configuration. As you can see, the configuration will, indeed, be saved using the XML file format. In this example, I will rename the file to IIS and will save the file into the file server exports network share. Before I proceed with the install, let's take a quick look at the XML file. If I open File Explorer and navigate to the file server exports share, you can see my XML file saved. 
If I open the file, you can clearly see that it is not the easiest file to read. The XML file is essentially a script that contains the code for Windows to install the roles and role services. I will now close the XML file and File Explorer, and will return to the Add Roles and Features wizard. Since I have reached the end of the wizard, I will click the Install button to install IIS onto this server. I will now change over to my Web Server 2 server. As with Web Server 1, this server has no roles and features installed. To prove this, I will open Server Manager. As you can see down the left hand side, no roles are listed other than the default. I will now close Server Manager and will return to my desktop. To use the XML file to install IIS and its role services onto this server, we have to use Windows PowerShell. So I will start by opening a Windows PowerShell prompt. From here, I will issue the commandlet install windows feature. Next, I will add the configuration file path switch and will enter the network path to my XML file, which is double backslash file server backslash exports backslash IIS dot XML. If I press enter, PowerShell will start to install IIS and the role services contained in the XML file. Depending on the number of roles, role services and features you have selected, this may take a number of minutes to complete. The installation has now completed, so I will close Windows PowerShell and will return to my desktop. Notice now that if I open Server Manager, the IIS role is now installed. To prove that all of the role services I selected have definitely been installed along with IIS, I will select Manage and Remove Roles and Features. If I next my way through to the Remove Server Roles screen and expand Web Server IIS, you can clearly see that we have a few sub options. If I continue to expand these out, you will recall that these sub options are the role services I installed earlier. Notice that all of the role services have ticks in the boxes, confirming that the role services are installed and I have the ability to remove them if I wish. This concludes this tech tip on how to export configuration settings from Server Manager to install roles and features. I hope you have enjoyed this tech tip and found it useful. For more tech tips from Will, see our YouTube channel. And remember to show your support by liking and commenting on our videos and by subscribing. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next tech tip.